Welcome to St. Luke's United Church of Christ in Independence, Missouri on this holy night for the virtual Christmas Eve service. Tonight, for the first time in nine months, sounds that had fallen silent will be heard again. Tonight, gifts that have not been offered will be shared again. Tonight, we will join the chorus of angels as we offer our praise and worship to the Christ child on the night of his birth. For ours is a song that must be sung and heard. Ours is a faith that cannot fall silent. I want to thank all of those whose effort make it possible to bring you the virtual Christmas Eve worship service experience. Those who decorated the sanctuary honoring the beauty of this night. Those who brought light to the sanctuary, lighting votives on the communion table during their solitary sanctuary visits those who brought the gifts of the poinsettias for the Christmas Eve chancel, those who prepared music that rings forth with the beauty of angels' songs. I especially want to thank Margie and Matthew for not only bringing their gifts to the service, but spending so much time recording tonight's music piece by piece for the safety of the musicians. And Matthew's mother, Elaine, who lent her production skills to the editing of the many recorded segments. I appreciate Jeff for always being behind the camera and especially for bringing tonight's service to you, allowing you to worship from the comforts and safety of your own home. Tonight's Christmas Eve service will include lighting the Christ candle. I invite you to light a candle of your own in your home, celebrating the light of Christ that shines upon you wherever you may be. Holy Communion will also be a part of this service. In the United Church of Christ, we practice an open communion table. That means whoever you are and wherever you are on life's journey, the communion table is open to you. If your tradition allows you to do so, I invite you to gather something to represent the elements of communion, wine, juice, maybe hot chocolate and a cookie, and participate in receiving communion during the service receiving Holy Communion in our homes in no way desecrates the sacrament, but rather sanctifies our home altars as we rest there in the abiding shelter of God's love. Come, let us celebrate the good news of great joy, which is for all people. Christ the Lord is born this holy night. Sleep, 
Sleep, my little Jesus. May peace attend thee, may peace attend thee. To the world, little Savior. Please join in our lighting of the Christ candle. We were afraid. It was a sound we would not hear. The sound of hope, the sound of peace, the sound of joy. We were afraid. This might be the year the songs fell silent. The song of good news, the song of peace on earth, the song of great joy. But these are songs that are still heard and sung by those who dream, by those who listen, by those who believe. Tonight, we light a candle. Whose light shines in the darkness, whose light the darkness cannot overcome, whose light shines upon us. This is the Christ candle. The Christ promised of God, the Christ born of woman, the Christ come to dwell among us.
Let us pray. Holy God, if we listen closely, we can almost hear the angels sing. If we listen closely, we can almost hear the bleats of sheep following shepherds and the hooves of confused barn animals. If we listen closely, we can almost hear the innkeeper say, no room. If we listen closely, we can almost hear the star whisper, follow me. If we listen closely, God, we can almost hear you. We want to hear it all. We don't want to miss a thing. So today we pray, help us listen closely. Give us hearts that believe that we may hear the songs of the angels and lift our voices to sing songs of your promise. Come among us in the Christ child, born this holy night. Amen. Hear now the narrative of the birth of Christ as told in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, beginning with verse 1. Now it came about in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that a census be taken of all the inhabited earth. This was the first census taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And all were proceeding to register for the census, every one to his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the city of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and family of David, in order to register along with Mary, who was engaged to him and was with child. And it came about that while they were there, the days were completed for her to give birth. She gave birth to her firstborn son 
And she wrapped him in cloths and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And in the same region there were some shepherds staying out in the fields and keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord suddenly stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terribly frightened. And the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which shall be for all the people. For today, in the city of David, there is born a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there appeared with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among men with whom God is pleased. And it came about when the angel had gone away from them into heaven that the shepherds began saying to one another, Let us go straight to Bethlehem then and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came in haste and found their way to Mary and Joseph and the baby as he lay in the manger. And when they had seen this, they made known the statement which had been told them about this child. And all who heard it wondered at the things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds went back, glorifying and praising God for all that they had seen and heard, just as had been told them. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Said the night wind to the little lamb, Do you see what I see? Way up in the sky, little lamb, do you see what I see? A star, a star dancing in the night with a tail as big as a kite, with a tail as big as a kite. Said the little lamb to the shepherd boy, Do you hear what I hear? Ringing through the sky, shepherd boy, Do you hear what I hear? A song, a song high above the trees, With a voice as big as the sea, With a voice as big as the sea. Do you hear what I hear? It's one of my favorite Christmas songs, But I wonder, do you hear what I hear? You and I may be listening to the same songs, to the same familiar birth narrative of the Christ child from the pages of Scripture tonight, but do you hear what I hear? Or do each of us hear something different? Do the songs we hear have a voice as big as the sea, or have their melodies been lost amidst so much noise? I wonder, do we hear anything at all? In the popular Christmas movie, The Polar Express, Hero Boy reluctantly boards a magical train bound for the North Pole. After a perilous journey, he finally arrives. Even upon arrival, he is unsure of whether he believed what he is seeing. Oh, he wanted to believe, but he didn't want to be bamboozled, led down the primrose path, be conned, be duped, have the wool pulled over his eyes, hoodwinked. He didn't want to be taken for a ride, railroaded. But he also wanted to hear what everyone else was hearing. He wanted to hear the sound of the sleigh bells. There were so many of them. They seemed to delight the other children, all of whom could hear them. But he didn't hear what they heard. Even when he took a sleigh bell in his own hand and shook it beside his ear, it fell silent. Until... He closed his eyes, abandoning himself to the mystery, and believed. Then he heard it. He heard what they heard, that beautiful, clear ringing of the sleigh bell. We've heard it before, all of it, the carols and songs, the stories. Maybe we've heard it so many times it has become sort of white noise, so familiar that it has lost its ring if ever it had one. Maybe we've grown older and wiser, matured and grown more rational. Somewhere along the way, there came a time when we didn't hear what others heard, or even what we could once hear. 
Maybe after the year we have all had, the songs of hope and joy are lost beneath the static of fear or uncertainty. We are afraid we may never hear the sound of angel songs again, the sound of hope, the sound of peace, of joy. Yet here we are tonight on Christmas Eve, listening for the sounds we were afraid we would never hear. Why? Because we want to believe. We want to be able to hear what others hear. We want to be able to hear again what we were once able to hear. We want to hear the good news, which is for all people. We want to hear a message of peace on earth. Do you hear what I hear? When you listen to the sounds of the Christmas Eve service, do you hear the beauty in the music? Do you hear the silent stars go by? Do you hear the peace hanging over the stable where Mary gave birth to the Christ child? Do you hear the joy of the angel's song? Do you hear a song as big as the sea? Do you hear the very presence of God? Tonight, listen with all you are, with the ears of your very soul. Close your eyes and open your spirit. Pick up these songs, the words of the story of Christ's birth, the promises of God. Hold them in your hand and put them close to your ear. Do you hear what I hear? These are songs that are still heard by those who dream, by those who listen, by those who believe. If you've seen the Polar Express, you surely remember what happens. Hero Boy is chosen to receive the first gift of Christmas at the North Pole. He asks for and receives the shiny sleigh bell that he could finally hear. He was warned, better keep that in a safe place. Unfortunately, the bell falls out a hole in his pocket. But no need to fear. It reappears beneath a tree on Christmas morning along with a note from Mr. C himself suggesting he fix that hole in his pocket. Keep the songs of this holy night in a safe place. Fix any hole through which they might slip away. For these are songs not just for tonight and not just for now. These are timeless songs that will ring for all eternity for those who believe. The adventures of Hero Boy end like this. At one time, most of my friends could hear the bell. But as years passed, it fell silent for all of them. Even Sarah found one Christmas that she could no longer hear its sweet sound. Though I've grown old, the bell still rings for me, as it does for all who truly believe. Listen, do you hear what I hear? The child, the child sleeping in the night, he will bring us goodness and light. He will bring us goodness and light and light. Amen.
The songs of this night and all it means can be heard by those who believe. The good news of God's abiding presence will be heard and made known through the offerings that we bring tonight and through the ministry that these gifts make possible.
Let us pray. God of glory in Jesus Christ, being born among us, your light shines and cannot be extinguished. May the light of Christ glow brightly within our lives. Through this offering, may all your children know joy and peace as this congregation gives witness to Christ's light. Amen. Listen, do you hear what I hear? 
the gifts of this table bring forth the good news which is for all people. Take these gifts in your hand, hold them close. Listen, God's mercy, grace, and abiding present ring forth sweetly and clearly in these gifts. And we are those who hear. Let us join in the chorus of the angels as we offer God our praise. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace among all people, ever in God's favor. As we approach this table, let us acknowledge our need for God's grace and forgiveness. Join me in the prayer of confession. O oh God, we confess that we sometimes do not hear the sounds of our songs. We have become hardened and aren't sure if your promises are meant for us. We ask that you forgive us and give us hearts that believe, voices that sing, and hope that rests in your abiding presence, which has come among us in the Christ child. Amen. Hear now this assurance of pardon. God's love knows no bounds. Love comes down at Christmas. Love so deep and so profound that nothing can silence it. This love is a promise that is meant for you. Listen, hear, believe. In Christ you are forgiven. You have found favor in God's eyes. Thanks be to God. In the night our Lord was betrayed, after the Passover feast, he took bread, he broke it, he gave it to his disciples, and he said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In a similar way, after the supper, Christ took the cup. He blessed it and gave thanks. He said, This cup is my blood, which is shed for many. As oft as you drink this, do this in remembrance of me. Come, Holy Spirit, bless this bread and bless this cup. May they be to us a song of promise, proclaiming your abiding presence, tender mercy and loving kindness, coming to dwell among us in the Christ child. Amen. The body of Christ broken for us, that we might become the body of Christ. The cup of the new covenant, written upon our hearts by the Spirit of God, do this in remembrance of Christ. Christ is born, light has shined, love has come, God is with us. May you hear now and always this song of good news and great joy. 